Good morning, today I've got five simple and easy tips to make your designs less boxy when you're using the Gutenberg block editor. Now each of these tips is easy to implement and it's also going to teach you some new techniques that you can use in creative ways on your own sites. So here are the five things I'm going to show you how to build. This one here has SVG shapes. You can see this lovely shape at the top of the page that just breaks up the page outline. And if I scroll down, you can see we've reflected this in a shape at the bottom. The second thing that I'm going to show you how to do is to make your galleries more interesting by adding some shapes to your galleries. The third thing is super cool cutouts. You can see this is an example here where we've got this actually photograph that's actually been cut out from below. The fourth thing that I'm going to show you how to build are these pages with these nice backgrounds for headings and also your content. And you can also see that these stick as well as I scroll up the page, I will show you how to do that, it's super cool. And then the final thing I'm gonna show you to do is just an idea really that you can actually start to mirror your text by adding shapes to your images like this. You can all do this natively in Gutenberg with no external software, so it's really cool. Let's get into it. Right, let's start with this one, which is the SVG waves. This is really simple. We're just gonna need two things to actually get this working though. You're gonna to need to go to this app I will put a link in the description below for you. And this is a great app where you can actually create your SVG patterns. Now there's tons you can do here. All I've done is created this wave using their wave generator. You can customize all the colors over here on the right, choose any color you like. And you can also do things like change the direction of it. You can have it stepping or peaking or a nice solid wave. You can also change the complexity of it like so. You can So you can see it's a very creative tool or you can just hit this little dice down here to get a randomized version of your wave. You are also gonna need though to add SVG support to WordPress because you can't natively upload SVG images to your WordPress sites. The beauty of SVG images are they are vector graphics, which means they are mathematically described. And essentially what that means is they will scale infinitely so that you won't have any kind of pixelation on them. So you're gonna need this plugin as well. I will also put a link in the description to that plugin then you just go to your page. Now the way I've used this to implement this, because I want to put some text within it, is just to add the cover block. So you just add the cover block as you normally would, then just drag the SVG literally into it like so. And then I'm going to make this full width. So I click on the cover block over here, select full width, because I want it to be the full width of my site. Now I can change the height of my cover block as you normally would. And the final thing you really want to do here is, is to change the opacity. And that just means you're left then with a kind of pure uh, result of the uh, SVG SVG wave and that's how I created this SVG wave all I've done is added the cover block and put the SVG wave in it and for this one I've literally just reversed it so I've gone back to the app here and I've just reversed these colors so I've just copied that color there put that in the bottom color and changed the top color to white and again I've changed the, I've changed the wave on that and then just added another cover block and put that in within it. Idea number two is to make your galleries more interesting by adding different radiuses or radii, I'm not sure which is correct, to each of your corners. If you look over on the left at the list view, you can see that the gallery block is actually a container block and each image block is its own discrete block within it. That's great because now we have more control over each image block. One of those control is a radius. There is also an extra control which you might not realize. So this is the bit I wanna show you. So I've just selected this first image you can see it differs from all the other images. And if we look over on the right, we can see we've got this border setting. Now we can change the borders universally for each of the corners, but we've also got this little icon here that lets us set a different radius for each of those corners essentially. And you'll see when I click on it, if I change the top one here, can you see how it's changing? I've added that to 309, but if I go back to 30, and then I can change this top right to 100. And this is how I actually created these separate images. I just went into each of these boxes and gave, gave each one its own value. Right, idea number three is to do these cool cutouts for photographs. This is an example of it here. We've also added this fixed background to this cover block as well. This is actually created using one of our free plugins which is called Caxton. I will put a link to it in the description below and within Caxton there is a shape divider block which was actually introduced by Matt Mullenweg at Nashville in 2018. Caxton Shape Divider Block from Poodle Press. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. <laughs> so as you can see, what they're doing is sort of choosing different kind of shapes that can go in between the blocks, matching the colors of the blocks that came before and after it. So I think we got some waves in there. I think we're also going to show a cloud one, which I really like, because sometimes I get asked whether WordPress runs in the cloud. 
I love that preview animation. <laughs> Go watch it all day. And so this shows, as you can see, creates this into beautiful transitions between blocks. And it actually uh, addresses one of my key worries when we started creating blocks, was that everything people were creating with them looked, well, rather blocky. <laughs> so bringing the different shapes, I think, really helps. I was actually in the audience at Nashville four years ago, and I had no idea that Matt was going to mention our plugin. So it was a pretty exciting day, as you can imagine. But here's the plugin. It just adds this new shape divider block. It just comes as a block, so you just add it to your page. And then over on the right here, we've got some different options for different styles. So we've got clouds, which is this one here. We've got the book style here. We've got waves here. We've got pyramids. So you can see all these different shapes that you can use or tilt. And the other cool thing that you can do with them, and this is really what it makes it special and useful for doing these cutouts, is that you can position them. You can either say normally, so that's just going to appear kind of below the block that it precedes. Uh, or you can say over previous block, which is how we achieve this effect. So what we're saying is this shape, can you actually put it above the block before it? Then we can also do things like make it full width or flip. And then you can also change the color of these. Now I'm going to put this back to white. And if I go and view the page, you'll see it's going to put it before the previous block, but create this beautiful cutout. And because it's a cover block above it, we can actually still do all our cover block stuff like make a fixed background and add text within it. Right, idea number four is to add some interesting backgrounds to your headings and also your content areas. This is a good example. I've also done an extra thing here. I've made it sticky, which I will show you how I've done it as well. And you'll see as I scroll down, uh, we come to Cricut and the Cricut will then stick, the Cricut heading will then stick to the top of the page. I've also added some different colors behind the text just to make it differentiate between the two se separate areas. And I've also added these nice different shaped backgrounds to your headings. Let me show you how this works. Right, for the stickiness, you are going to need a plugin. And this is the one I recommend. It's called Sticky Block for Gutenberg Editor. Again, I will link to it in the description below for you. And this is how I created that page. So we're going to start by adding the columns block. So I'm going to hit forward slash columns and just add the columns block. You could also add the columns block using the block inserter, but I'm doing it the quick way. Then I'm going to choose my proportions here. So I'm going to choose those proportions. First column, we're going to add the sticky block because the sticky block is a container block and everything that we want to stick has to go within it. Let me click on the list view so you can see this. So we've got now got our columns block with two columns and a sticky block within it. And then within the first block, we can write our first heading. So I'm going to write football. Now to add the nice background to it, there's a couple of things we need to do. The first is we need to group it because we can't add a radius background to the normal paragraph or heading block. So we're going to click on paragraph and we're going to click on the three dots and we're going to go group. And that puts a group block. Basically, the paragraph block is now within the group block. And the beauty of the group block is we can add these nice backgrounds. You see, we've got this radius here and a border. We can actually add a background first to the group block like so. And so now we can add a background color first to the group block and then secondly we can add a radius. Now we could add an equal radius to the whole thing or like I showed you before we can click on this little icon here and set a separate radius for each of our corners which is what I actually did. Now you can play with these obviously and change the different radiuses to whatever you like. And that's all essentially I did. So we've got the columns block with a sticky block, with a group block, with a paragraph block underneath it. But you see how it just adds a bit more interest to your heading. And then with this second column, all I did was add a whole bunch of content. So, and then there's one final thing we need to do to finish off this page. So keep your eye on the football heading up here. So as I scroll down the page, you'll see it sticks to the top of the page until a certain point, which is called the push-up point. You'll see we get there and see how the football heading has now gone and it's then replaced by the cricket heading and you decide when that happens and it's essential you add this otherwise it just doesn't really work. So once you're on the edit screen just find your sticky block again and click on it to select it then look over on the right here and you'll see your sticky options and then this is the key bit here your push up element and this is where you put the element that you're going to decide that that, that heading will actually push up the page. Now you can call this what you like, but you need to also put that within your content. So if I scroll down, you'll see I've actually chosen the second paragraph from the bottom and I've just added a class to that. If I go advanced, you see I've added an additional CSS class, which I've called cricket. That means when the page scrolls to that particular point, the heading will then push up. And then the final idea I had was really just a nice design idea. And this is an example of how it could be used 
where I actually mirror the text, this D here, in the image as well, and also within the button. And again, we're using our lovely radius setting to achieve this, all within Gutenberg. So this is just an image block that I've added, and I've used the border radius setting over on the right here to add a tiny little radius on the left uh, edge here, but on the right ones, I've actually added quite a lot of pixels to create this nice curve. And I've done exactly the same with the button. You see, you can do exactly the same on the button, where I've added a radius just on this right-hand edge to add this lovely curve just on the right, which mirrors the Devon text. So I hope you get some ideas for your own sites from those five tips to make your sites less boxy. If you enjoyed this video, it would be amazing if you can hit that like button now because it really, 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 really helps spread the word of the channel. And as you probably know by now, every time you do hit that like button, our cats get a little treat. So thank you again for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button and you'll be notified every time I release a new video. I've now done over a hundred videos just on Gutenberg itself. So thank you again, keep well, and I'll see you soon.